So welcome back to Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska, getting set for the Class A Boys State Championships. I want to remind everybody, you can preserve these memories for a lifetime by getting a copy of the State High School Boys or Girls State Championships by logging on to www.nhsbf.com. Follow the props and get your copy. Preserve these memories for a lifetime. DVDs of the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation provided by the NHSBF. So here in Class A, we have a couple of teams who've seen each other already this year. The North Star Navigators taking on Columbus in a Class A battle. Let's take a look at the starting lineups and we'll begin with Dwayne DeMode's North Star Navigators. Nick Jackson is just a junior, the senior Brandon Skidoris. Corey Edmund is a sophomore and a good one. Zach, Zor Zach Zorns, Brandon Allgood, Seth Hampton, all seniors for Dwayne DeMode's club. Competitors today, the Discoverers from Columbus. Andrew McCarthy in his second year as head coach. Dylan Craigs is a freshman along with Justin Olson. A few juniors in there, Dylan Ganskow, Mike Esch, Trevor Muth, and Derek Hare. I'm sorry, Derek Heyer is a senior. So it should be a good one here in Class A. The boys practicing now, getting ready. When we come back, we will have the championships in the Class A Boys State Championship. We'll be back at Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln on NET Sports. Brought to you in part by the Ellen and Marcia Bear Foundation and by the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation, encouraging high schools to sanction the sport of bowling across Nebraska. America's export of soybeans helps the U.S. maintain a positive agricultural trade balance. Nebraska contributes half of its soybeans for export. The protein and oil content in soybeans enhance the growing demand for higher protein diets. The Nebraska Soybean Board promotes research to develop new soybean varieties with higher protein and oil content for major agricultural markets. The Nebraska Soybean Checkoff, growing opportunity from the ground up. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. My job with Nebraska Public Power District takes me to new heights, offers me challenging experiences, like me, the utility cares about Nebraska. I go home at night knowing that what I do makes a difference. To put it simply, I am where I want to be. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us. Together with your local public power utility. You're watching NET Television. One of the things to me that was very valuable about NET is that I haven't always lived in Nebraska. And when I moved to Nebraska a few years ago, one of the first ways or the first ways that I received information on the new state and the new city I'd, I'd moved to was through viewing NET. Um, very early on, we turned on that channel and saw Beef State, and we saw a program about Omaha history and the Creightons. And so I learned about you know, the new place I had moved to through viewing public television. NET tells Nebraska stories, and your support makes that possible. Thank you. Well, welcome back to Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska. Two state champions already in the books. We will crown one more here in Class A. I want to remind everybody that the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation is thrilled to be bringing you bowling statewide on NET Sports. If you'd like more information on high school bowling in the state of Nebraska, all you have to do is log on to NHSBF.com. You can learn all you want to on their website. But great to bring high school bowling championships to you border to border across the state of Nebraska on NET. And just a reminder, we've talked about this earlier today, but Nebraska, the only state in the United States which telecasts their high school bowling championships. And you might say, is it sanctioned? Yes, there are 20 other states that sanction high school bowling uh, within their athletic associations. So we're ready to go here in Class A. North Star taking on the Columbus Discoverers. <laughs> North Star with the first shot of the game. Well, we'd be remiss if we don't thank uh, John Lacido and his staff at Sun Valley Lanes here in Lincoln for the unbelievable job they do putting on this event. This is as class an event as uh, you're going to see in 
not only in high school bowling, but just the amount of work that goes into making this whole venue mm -hmm. be a tremendously exciting uh, you know, place. Uh, and then thanks to the other bowling centers in Lincoln, uh, Parkway, uh, Park, Parkway Lanes and Hollywood Bowl in Lincoln, and also the folks at Madsen's, uh, which we used their facilities for the qualifying yesterday. I mean, the uh, Lincoln area is blessed with a lot of people that uh, take care of the bowlers here in town, and the folks that own the bowling centers here just do a great job. So Nick Jackson just missing the spare. Dylan Kring starts it out for Columbus with the strike. So right away, the discoverers with a quick advantage. North Star Navigators here at the state championships looking for a boys state title under Dwayne DeMode. Looks like a giant Marshmallow going down the lane there. <laughs> Brandon Skidoris didn't hit like a marshmallow. That was quality shot. Open shoulder comes through the ball with a lot of torque. Tremendous job. Look at Dylan Ganskow. Ganskow averages 202 on the season. Came up a little high, left a four pin. Still uh, finding their way around the lane conditions. Take a little while for him to get zeroed in. Here's sophomore Corey Etman. Etman just a solid, straight up the boards kind of kid. And carries. Corey, high average on this team. And the son of assistant coach Dale Etman Jr. Boy, the contemporary styles now with the cupped arm and Used to teach uh, bowlers to keep the elbow locked and straight, and now you see uh, the elbows somewhat bent and cocked, and that is all done to get maximum torque when you release the ball to get revolutions. Got to be able to control it, though. So on a double, here's Zach Zorns. Zorns, a senior, averaging 200, needs to turn. Comes up a little light. Well, Zach uh, obviously Built very athletically mm -hmm. and uh, could control the ball, just to, just a touch light. Needs to make a slight adjustment to the right with his feet. Ash crosses over and Mike Ash gets the carry. Trips that six pin forward on the Brooklyn. Well, we've seen in earlier matches, Larry, how spares have come back uh, to bite you in the hind end if you don't pick them up. So. 2-4-5 cross lane has given people trouble earlier, and that almost was a disaster. Ball hooks past the two enough to carry out the five. Cross is just enough. So a fairly even match here early. Here's Derek Heyer. Heyer averages 198 on the season. Heyer is a senior. Nice shot. Gets the mixer to go. Good looking Columbus team here. Derek's relatives the owners of the Humphrey Bowl in Humphrey, Nebraska. Vernon Corinne Heyer since retired and sold the facility to Corey Hostreeter, who was the coach of uh, yep. Humphrey St. Francis earlier. Now a state champion. So now up on the right lane, Trev Muth. Muth is a junior, averaged 192 on the season, high game of 279. He's a lefty. Right off the corner, lefty got it. Trev comes from great bowling lineage. His dad, Gary Muth, in the Columbus Bowling Hall of Fame. Great bowler in the Columbus area for a long time. Ooh, and that's what we're talking about, about spares. So, Brandon, all good. Early on, got to encourage the kids, make sure they understand. It's very early yet. A couple of uncharacteristic errors. Well, missing a two pin, you're almost going to say that's no excuse uh, for that. But, you know, these are high school kids and they're working hard and they're trying to continue to to uh, get the jitters out being on television here. Bright lights and all that fun stuff. So they'll settle down. Both these teams have uh, had finals finals appearances before. So it's not completely new territory. Crossover and tripping another six. So right now Columbus getting the early breaks. Dylan Krings, the freshman with the strike, a little embarrassed chuckle there. If he 
takes that trophy home to Columbus. <laughs> Chuckle gonna, all the way back, right? <laughs> long forget that was a Brooklyn strike. That's right. They don't ask how, they just ask how many. Yep. That comes up a little light, leaves the washout. Well, the bowlers that are going to throw a little less hook are going to be playing a lot further right towards the closer to the right edge of the lane around the seventh or eighth board that'd be in between the first and second arrow but the bowlers that hook it a lot are going to be a little closer to the center and that is a handful that'll hook it what a shot mm -hmm. Woo. pounded down by dylan gansko gansko high game will not surprise you 300 and we have a substitution already into the game seth hampton to pick up the spare seth misses left well, obviously, with Columbus in the middle of a five-bagger, five in a row, and his team having already missed three spares now, it's time for the Navigators to get lined up for game number two. That's correct, and you can substitute freely in Baker-style bowling. Good chance to test to see if somebody else has a better opportunity to throw more strikes. As you said, Larry, this one's pretty much chalked up to Columbus already with Potential 239, they would go off the sheet for strikes in the remaining ninth and 10th frames. Open shoulder there. Finish, yep. Comes in a little light. So Skidoris with some work yet to do. You mentioned these teams have seen each other already this year. North Star knocked off Columbus the first weekend of the season. So way back on December 4th, opening weekend of, actually it's the second weekend, but opening weekend of conference play. There's one tournament that typically happens in the high school bowling season prior to that weekend. But in the first weekend of conference competition, North Star knocked off Columbus 13 to eight. So it was a close match at that time. And should also mention these two teams squared off in the same district earlier this year. And in that district, North Star won the district championship, but ended up forfeiting, it, forfeiting the championship later because they used an ineligible player. Coach Dwayne DeMode at the time did not know that one of his players had not been in school on Friday before the tournament. And of course, Nebraska High School Bowling Federation rules mimic those of the NSAA. And because those rules indicate that if you miss school, you cannot compete in weekend competition, he was deemed ineligible, suspended for a period of time following that, another great shot on the strike by Corey Etland. Well, we've always uh, wanted to make sure that uh, when, bowling time, when bowling's time comes to become an NSA sport, and, and we are positive it will, it's just a matter of not of if, it's now a matter of when, uh, we want our rules and our guidelines to be completely ready to go. So there's pretty much a seamless or transparent uh, uh, you know, uh, transition into uh, the NSAA taking uh, control of high school bowling. And, and that is a rule, and the credit goes to Coach Dwayne DeMode as he, yes. he reported that. And uh, well, there's, uh, our rule book isn't as thick as the NCAA's, but we have our rules and our guidelines. And, uh, but it really didn't matter because uh, they ended up making the uh, state uh, state tournament anyway. Be a wild card. Correct. They just actually, these two teams actually reversed, uh, I do believe, if I remember right, Larry. And so, hey, now they're here. Both of them here bowling for all the wheat, so. Great shot by All Good. And it was a, a good move to begin to experiment a little bit with, uh, with what Dwayne Damone did, uh, mm -hmm. knowing that he had the first game pretty much pretty much given up there, but uh, he made some lineup changes and he's given his bowlers a chance to get lined up. Now they're working on a three-bagger, so they're going to salvage possibly a 200 game out of it, but yep. Columbus is going to be in the 230s. Or 240s. Oh, you're right. 239, almost <laughs> 240, but that's great Baker ball. Yeah, terrific. Ooh, boy, just a Today's contemporary tap is almost a uh, 710. It's uh, almost as uh, as frequent, uh, not as frequent, but it's uh, it's frequent enough to where it's just a standard tap now in bowling, and it's similar to leaving a 10 pin. But today's bowling balls hook so hard. Another great shot there, a long arm swing there. 
So subbing in there Doug, was Justin Olson getting a shot there, the freshman. Subbing in there to finish out that first game. And as Brandon Allgood puts the finishing touches on North Stars 189, 236 for Columbus, 189 for Lincoln North Star. So Columbus takes that early one game to none lead, putting the pressure on North Star. Well, let's see if those lineup changes have helped now as we transition into game two. Well, next Saturday, you don't want to miss Nebraska High School Girls State Basketball Finals on NET. Live action begins at 9 a.m. Central, continues throughout the day with all classes. You can log on to netnebraska.org slash sports for individual game times. Watch the best on NET1 and in high definition on NET HD. NET is, of course, Nebraska's home for sports. You haven't told me yet, Larry, are you doing swimming or basketball coming up? Both. Yeah. I will be handing play-by-play -play for state swimming, state girls basketball, and state boys basketball. Well, I have this sneaking suspicion that uh, the Nebraska educational television system would fall apart if it didn't have Larry Putney doing all the FaceTime on play-by-play. -play. But Larry, and all, as much as we joke, it's an honor to be here with you, buddy. You do a great job on all the sports, man. Great job. You know, you say that, and I'm not sure if you're just messing with me or if you're being serious. So I'll, I'll take it to the best of intentions and say thank you very much. It's nice of you to say. But I promise you, an ET would be, would be just fine without Larry Putney. From a guy that used to do the weather in Sioux City, you come a long way. <laughs> Good conversion there. Get off that topic quickly. <laughs> Two marks. Moving right North along. North Star and Columbus. And I see North Star in the lead, and it, it uh, the last now the last frame and a half now for Columbus going back into the last game. A couple of their bowlers have lost the pocket a little bit, coming up a little high, a little light a couple times, and now North Star seems to be the team that might be maybe lined up a little better here. As I said, that is a unique looking bowling ball. Today's reactive resin balls, you can get pretty creative with the design. Opens that shoulder wide open, comes through. Thumb downs it a little bit. Yep. If that's a, uh, a two board move to the right, he's pretty much in, pretty much gonna be right there in the pocket now. Talk about power and thumb down. This is Boy. complete rotation of the wrist. Watch the point of release here. Dylan Gans got boom. Right at the bottom, turns on it, sets up, carries the trip four. And in addition to turning his wrist around, he's also cocking his, his wrist. And at the point of release, he's, he's actually uncocking it. So the ball not only rotates left to right, or right to left, I should say, but it rolls off the end of his hand. It creates a little bit of forward roll, too. And that's what makes that ball roll so heavy at the pocket. A lot of guys like me, us old codgers, can barely get the thumb out of the ball first anymore. And uh, <laughs> But uh, the ability to just create as much power at the pins as you can is so key in today's sport. He almost, if you watch him closely, he almost has that release of a, almost like a two-hander where it's mm -hmm. a pickup and a straight down, which creates that long flat spot at the bottom of your swing. The longer the flat spot, the more you can stay on line and hit it harder. It's really kind of what his release looks like. It's so, you know, with that bent elbow and cock wrist both the same, it really hits it hard. So a good shot there by Mike Esch. So now Corey Epman on the right hand lane. Epman. Corey's got a lot of forearm. There's a fan of Corey's. Straight up the boards, crosses over. Corey just overturned that one a little too early before that ball got off his hand. His, his hand was already turning over, caused that ball to miss left. Good shot and carry. Derek Heyer with another strike. Derek Heyer has his lucky quarter in his pocket. Doesn't bowl without it. Whatever it takes. That's right. So Entman needs the conversion. Skid. Mm. Well, once again, Columbus is coming out, stringing them together, putting pressure on North Star, and you can see what happens when you put a little pressure on a team. Well, as they just got done saying at the start of this game that Columbus might have been lost a little bit. No, they found it. It's gonna be important to get a strike working here, and there you go. Got that to roll out just in time and trip the four. 
So a big shot there, very big shot for North Star. Now they need Brandon Allgood to follow it up with another one. Because this guy will grab a hand, grab a chunk at the bottom as well, this lefty. Trev Muth. Four in a row. Second consecutive game in two games that Columbus has strung four together. You'd almost consider Trev a more of a uh, of an in-betweener. Doesn't really overhook the ball, but comes out of it very well at a great angle, playing way off on the left side towards the other, and a strike right back by Northstar. Good shot by Algren. Hey, sports fans, NET brings you more high school championships than any other television network in the state. Next month, you don't want to miss the NSAA Girls and Boys Basketball Championships. For more information on dates, times, and available webcasts, you can log on to netnebraska.org slash sports. Here's Dylan Krings again. Krings makes it five in a row. Well, that's going to be tough to beat. You're not kidding. Here's Nick Jackson, who desperately needs to put one more on top of the double. I think the only the only solace to this is is that if you do lose, you're still alive. You don't have a large deficit to make up. You just need to win the next game. Same type of hit doesn't carry for Dylan. It did for Trevor the shot before. And that's Derek Heyer. My apologies, Derek Heyer with the shot. Nope, you're right. That was Nick Jackson. <laughs> that's what we said to start with, right? That's right. Okay. <laughs> Columbus can really, really twist the knife now with another strike. He's six in a row. Just a strong release. Wow, Dylan Ganskow again. 307-30, high game in series. Wants to go to UNL, go into engineering. Remember the quiz bowl team, 3.9 GPA, and oh yeah, he can bowl a little bit too. Absolute necessity, this spare. And mm. we're past having North Star in a hole now. They're, yeah. they're pretty much almost buried again. But being down two games, you can come back and win. You can come back and win the next three. So in the middle of six in a row, and here's Mike Esch. We'll try to keep it going. Got a hook. Left the 2 8. Now, I don't know if, if I'm uh, if I'm Dwayne DeMode, I'm, I'm looking like I'm been run over by a truck because the North Star boys haven't made a whole lot of bad first shots. They're 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 not picking their spares up, but they've been in and around the pocket for the most part. So it's not like they're completely lost. Lost in bowling means that you just can't find the pocket. That you're either high or light or completely miss it. So. If I'm coach DeMode, I'm, I, I don't know if I would begin to substitute other people in. I would uh, just think that uh, somewhere down the road they're going to have to start carrying. Right. The 2 8. Not a lot of defense for a whole lot of strikes in a row, is there? The only, the only thing I can think of, Larry, right now is, is if Columbus stops striking, they're going to. We're going to have to see how their spare shooting abilities are. They are. They they have to uh, pick up those spares or they don't strike. So so far so good. We're going to be in the 200s again. Brandon Skador is now in the left hand lane. John covers it up. All Columbus has to do is show up here and they'll be the winners of game two. So Columbus shot 230 in game number one and on pace to shoot 240 here. So back to back huge games and with that last ball not being a strike by North Star, they are now officially shut out. Mm. It's kind of a little bit of a late finish there for mm -hmm. Columbus's Derek Heyer, He's a senior. He's the heart of the team on this bio sheet. 
had a good cover. 204, the best that Lincoln North Star can shoot if they strike out, and already in the eighth frame, Columbus has 207. So this one in the books as well, and it will go down as back-to-back -back wins for the Columbus North Stars. They will take a two games to none lead. And while it may seem like they've been overwhelmed a bit here early, it's two games, and you sure. you can very quickly turn this around, even though it, it has been kind of a mismatch to this point. And not because of anything North Star is doing. Certainly, it's just because Columbus has been throwing a whole lot of strikes. You bet, Larry. And, and as I said earlier, they're, they're not, they haven't been uh, missing the pocket a lot on North Star. They just are not uh, getting the, the, the carrying and uh, of the corner pins and leaving some single pins. So you, know, you just have to take it one game at a time. They've got to come back and try and win game three and just keep climbing up ladder. <laughs> Although, wow, it might be a daunting task. Yep, so Trev Muth puts 10 in the pit there, and that seals it. Columbus does win game number two, and they will shoot 240 or better with that strike. So as we see Brandon all good, try to trip down oh. 7, 10, Jeez. and out by all good. Maybe that can get you going. You never know what little break is going to spark a big comeback. Well. Let's go ahead and take a look then at the, the, some of the singles competition that happened earlier this week. Obviously, singles competition happening at the same thing, or something's happening at the same time as the team competition as Columbus subs in there and just misses a little, does Justin Olsen. They'll still shoot around 240. Here are the individual singles standings. Lincoln Southeast had a terrific battle with Lincoln North Star in the semifinal. Southeast, the other great team in the state. Ryan Motes led them with a 646 and led the state. He's your state singles champion. Nathan uh, Rydell shot 602, also from Southeast. Columbus Dylan Ganskow, who we see here today, shot 594. Zach Zorns, who's in this battle as well, shot 581. And Brandon White from Scotts Bluff Gehring shot 579. So those are your top five finishers in the singles competition. Motes is your state singles champion in Class A. So that nine pin count does give them a 246 score. So 230, 246 in back-to-back -back Bakers games, big scores for the discoverers of Columbus. And they came in here and discovered very quickly their shot. Well, you've got to be positive to your team now. If you're North Star, you just need to say, listen, a couple of breaks go our way, you pick up your spares. If they miss a few spares or get a few splits, you're, you're down by one. So it's not it's not like being down 100 pins or being down 10 runs in a in a, in a baseball game. You have a chance mm -hmm. to be able to, to climb back in, Larry, and that's what's great about the Baker-style bowling we yep. do here. Yeah, you look at North Star scores, 189, 196, nothing wrong with what they're doing. Just Columbus at 230, 246 has just been enormous. And you saw a look at the North Star girls team there momentarily in the stands cheering on the North Star guys. Of course, last week we showed you on NET the girls championships and the North Star girls. The Gators won a state title. <laughs> by Jamie Sigler, and Haley Hall, and Kendra Porter. Three terrific sophomores. I'd like to see those three go up against some of these boys. Yeah, that would be just a tremendous display of talent. Those ladies were just tremendous last week. Just a lot of talent. All right, Columbus can come out of the gate fast. A strike here would be a blow to the psyche of the North Star. But so Seth Hampton now in the game for the Navigators. There's a look at Seth Hampton, great kid, 3.6 GPA. Already been accepted into the UNL Engineering School. Big heart as well, and picks up the spare. So a nice job by Seth Hampton. Well, if he can't win at this bowling center, he can design a new one. That's right. <laughs> He'll be able to. That's a tremendous achievement going into engineering. And Uh, and Larry, I remember a few years back, I do believe it might have been 2007 when we were here in the Columbus Boys. I was certain that in their stint on TV that they were clean for that afternoon. That's right. And clean meaning no open frames. And to, to win uh, three games or whether I'm pretty, I think it was a sweep, a sweep of three games, mm -hmm. to not have any open frames, I mean, you just pretty much uh, take the 
chance to win right out of your opponent's hands, but North Star back from strike, so. Not done yet. Any spark can get you going. Well, John Eckhold at Westbrook Lanes in Columbus, that's the host center that uh, is the home field for Columbus uh, High School Discoverers bowling program. John coached for many years, and all, John himself was a tremendous spare shooter, and when John was coaching, when his boys were on the team uh, back then, uh, his twin boys have since graduated, I remember they were talking about their spare shooting ability of the whole team, so. Ganskow with another strike. All even through two. Edmund, second high average in the state at 212. Great shot. Big ball by Edmund. It's going to say good medicine for a recovery here for North Stars to start throwing some strikes. So now Mike Ash up on the right hand lane. Bump, bump there. Good shot by Esch. A lot of times that means you lose the ball off the swing, and uh, but that, if he did, he lost it right in the perfect spot. North Star can begin to climb into the head of Columbus, inside their minds with a three bagger. It's left. Sits. It's not. And it's sat up for Zorns. Zach Sorns with a big shot for the co-captain. He says, this is the way you want to play it. You just want to strike, we'll go right along for the ride. Columbus says, keep up. Boy, what a great match. What a great game. Both teams started out this game number three with an eight spare, and both teams with three in a row. Needs to hook. It did. Oh. Get it out. Mm. Didn't quite slap that tin out. Little too much skid, not enough roll. The ball just didn't come in at the right angle. Larry just kind of uh, went a little too long before it uh, made its move to the pocket. So North Star's got to convert this spare because that's what got him off track the last game, even though Columbus threw six or seven in a row at him. And here's Muth again. Crossed over and left a four pin. Saw Trev let go of the ball. The ball instead of going out onto the lane off his hand, went up and out onto the lane. That caused that ball to Nose up and go high. Cross lane at the 10. Good cover by Allgood. I think that's big, Larry, Yep, in my opinion. Now you're going to put the pressure on Columbus to make some spares. They haven't had to do too much of that so far. Trev cross lane, uh -oh. and there, there you go. go. Star now with a two pin lead. Spare working makes it 12. So the two teams switch lanes, and it's North Star with its first lead of the match. Got a large Gator contingent, obviously, here at Sun Valley Lanes. Making the easy drive across town to come support them. A lot of people here from Columbus also. Okay. The leadoff bowler here in the sixth strike would be huge for North Star. Ooh. Seth Hampton, a little bit of work to clean up, and now Dylan Krings. Krings, JV All-State first team last year. Dad's had a big influence on him in bowling. He says high game 289, average 183. Comes up a little light and trips the 2-8. 2-8 and out. <laughs> Puts Columbus back in the lead with a, with a break. Need a spare Important here. Spare here, Skid, got it. Well, they're hanging in there. Yep. Still with a, well, actually the match is all even now with the strike working for Columbus, so a double here will give Columbus a 10-pin lead. And this young man could just, a, just about throw it through the back of the machine yep. with the power out of that hand. That's Grabs the hand, foot's left. Ooh. Sometimes you grind on it too much. Yep. It looked like he was trying as hard as he could to just rip the finger grips out of that ball when he came out of it, but hung on to it just a little bit. Same as like when a baseball pitcher hangs on to the curveball too long, goes in the dirt. 
Same thing applies for bowling. It's all about timing and the point of release. Taking a little extra time on the approach. Still a tight game with North Star on top by 10. Just gets that 10 out. Six just grabs it and Demode gives him a chest pull. Well, the sound you hear may be the sound of momentum making a change. So still a 10-pin advantage for North Star and a big shot coming up for Corey Epman. Corey can put some pressure on the discoverers here with a double. Take him up by 30, Larry, if he can throw a strike. One of the few times that they've led and it'll be the biggest lead they've had. Needs to hook. Like he's just a touch, a quick. touch fast, you yep. bet. Yep. That's exactly right, just a little fast. Now, big opportunity for the Discoverers to try to get back in this. Mike Esch. Good shot by Esch. Oh, oh, that's... God, the messenger avoids tragic 7-10. That, that would have uh, really gave North Star the commanding lead, but now the pressure back on North Star, and this is a tough spare, Corey Entman. Needs to avoid the chop. Straight at it with a lot of speed. Oh, and he just a little too quick. That's actually a, the attempt there was very well taught to take away the hook and go straight at it. That's very well taught. If you watch the PBA tour on the weekends, you'll see how most of the pros approach it that way. Strike here, puts him back in the lead. Or excuse me, that's a spare, it ties the match. Strike by the Columbus discovers in the next frame. Gives yep. him the lead. Gives him a one pin lead. So a tight match still. Zach Zorns on the right hand lane. Zorns, senior co captain, starts up a little too quick. And that's a tough conversion as well. His, his teammate Corey Hippman was a little fast the frame before. Shot before Zach was a little slow on that, caused the ball to hook high. 6 9 10 coming up. And that as well. A little light. Well, now we're gonna, it's going to come down to spare shooting. This match is virtually even. Columbus with, or excuse me, North Star with a one pin lead right now, but it's going to come down to spare shooting here in the ninth frame. Cross lane, nice. tough spare. Got it. Good conversion by Zorns. Likes to be called Diesel. <laughs> Came through in the clutch there, that's for sure. All right, well, that, uh, that it very, very much now puts North Star in command. A strike here in the first ball in the tenth is going to give North Star a possible 215, 205 clip. Best Columbus can shoot is 202. So strike here and then good count will shut out the Discoverers. Good ball, got it. Yes. Still alive, Larry. Not done yet. Looks like eight pins is the magic number for North Star. Yep. And now it's less than that. So now it's over. 192, the best that the Discoverers can shoot. 195 already the score for North Star. That is. So they're getting a little of a big Mo back, and he has switched benches. What a tremendous, tremendous release there, that ball. Not as much hook as some of the other players, but still the contemporary release. A lot of forward and side roll. So credit Coach DeMode for getting his team's head back in the game. All good, another one of those terrific students. 4.043 GPA, three-year student council. National Honor Society. He was the kid who stepped up in the 10th frame yesterday, needing nine or better to beat Lincoln Southeast and make it to the state championships, and he did it. And Southeast, gotta tell you, a terrific high school team this year. 
So a big, big accomplishment for them to make it here, and we're seeing a couple of great teams here as well. So 214 to 190, and the trend of you must shoot 210 or better to win continues. There's your final, 214-190. Hey, you can go online with NET News for one-on-one -on -one discussions with Nebraska policymakers each week on Capital Conversations. NET News reporter Fred Knapp will explore issues important to Nebraskans and introduce you to the state's decision makers. Watch online at nebraska.org slash Capital Conversations or on Facebook at NET News Nebraska. Well, Larry, we've talked in matches prior to this about what we call transition and carry down. Transition and carry down is how the oil migrates down the lane as these guys that just put tremendous revolutions on the ball. The ball actually acts as a sponge and picks up the lane conditioner. Some of the oil will remain on and in the ball, but a lot of it ends up further down the lane the more games you bowl, and that's going to affect the reaction at the back end. And you saw on our left-hand lane there for Columbus, our leadoff bowler, you saw... Uh, saw the leadoff bowler just begin to miss the ball or miss the pocket just a little bit to the left. Some of that is caused by the transition. It was Dylan Krings that uh, strong ball, but the ball just didn't quite make it up to the pocket. And some of that could be because of the lane conditioner going down the lane. Seth Hampton, great spare by Seth. Wow. So an important shot for the Gators. Now another look at Dylan Ganscout. Dylan will grab a handful at the bottom here. Boom. Watch this. Mm. And we've seen also in the past yep. that as you get closer to a state championship, you can begin to be a little tentative in a lot of ways. And uh, we've seen a lot of games where there's been plentiful strikes, but the last game or two, fewer and fewer as people are beginning to think about what's about to happen. So, got to stay loose, got to trust your game. Yeah. Very good say, shot there. I would say momentum's on North Star's side now. <laughs> Absolutely. Skidoris with the strike. So now we'll see how the spare. Dylan Ganskow. Oh, wow. Just caught the 10. Got it done. Corey came up light the last time he bowled on this lane. Let's see if he makes the adjustment. I'd say so. Walking it off. This is how it's supposed to be, Larry. A little crossed over, left the five pin. Safe shot. So now Zach Zorns, the co-captain. Diesel on a double. Get there, got it, what a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty Mo has a new address. Good cover, when you're in the moment, and you're down 2-0, and the, your opponent has just shot 230, 246 at you. It's hard to imagine that it can turn like this, but we've seen it so many times where you just get a shot or two to go your way, and it could have been all good shot in the 10th when he had the 7-10 and tripped him. All of a sudden, that kind of break can provide that switch that just flips, and now they've got a four-bagger going. They're putting pressure on Columbus. Columbus is beginning to squeeze it a little bit. 
You're 100% right, Larry. That ball looks a little left, just a touch high. So, yeah, there's now beginning to be a little bit of look of concern. Now, uh, Coach McCarthy for Columbus High has got to gather his players together and say, hey, come on now. Let's remember, we just need to squeak out one more win. What Columbus is doing, though, Larry, is they're picking their spares up so far. Open frame or a split for? Uh, I should know yep. better to say <laughs> there you that. There go. <laughs> I think we've right. seen more, more spares missed for, from right-handers going from right to left than we've seen going across at possibly a 10-pin. They're really having a tough time navigating the heavy conditioner in the middle of the lane. Muth crosses over. Got a break, took that five out, could have been it's a split. Just, it's just a much less confident demeanor than we saw a game ago or two games ago well, out of Columbus. Seen, you've seen Trevor now, Trev Muth, uh, you've seen him now cross over both times, and uh, that's a sign that he's a little tentative, doesn't want to give the ball away to possibly throw it in the gutter. Left-handers are playing a little further outside on the left side of the lane, and another open frame. So. So what do we say about back, spare yep, shooting? Back-to-back -back <laughs> single pins open so important, not just from a score perspective, but a momentum perspective as well. I mean, the, the energy that that takes out of you when you blow single pins like that can really affect. Well, you can preserve the 2011 Nebraska High School Girls and Boys Bowling Championships with a DVD copy offered by the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation. For your copy of the championships, log on to nhsbf.com, follow the links, and you can preserve your state championships for a lifetime. Great shot by Seth Hampton, rung a 10, and try to get the five-bagger. The crowd knows now that North Star boys have found their spot on the lane to consistently hit the pocket. Columbus needs to answer right now. And they do. So big shot by Dylan Krings, being able to throw that on top of North Star coming off of its run of strikes can provide a little bit of momentum, but great job by Hampton to convert. Such a key shot there. Keeps the pressure on Columbus. It's a 56 pin lead right now by the Gators. Double here, though, by Columbus can cut it in half. A little high. Three, six, nine, ten. And that adds up to trouble. Mm -hmm. If I could do quick math, I would actually say it adds up to 34, but I'm not that good. <laughs> In the track area. Oh, man. That's Good shot. Two solid tens. Last two shots there for, for North Star's Brandon Skidoris. Two solid tens. Picked up the last two. He'll make a ball change here and go cross lane. Sit. Yep. Chop that 2 8. Right off the 6 10. Larry North Star is three frames away from being back to even in this whole championship match. So they can just not cave in here. They're going to end up being tied at two and two. We go to a game five. And again, it's really about staying clean right now for North Star. After that big run they had, the four in a row, and the three opens that the Discoverers have had has opened it up to the point if they can just stay clean, they'll walk away with the win. 189, the best right now that Columbus can shoot. And actually, North Star can get to 189 with a couple of opens here. That's right. You're actually, you, what you're, and Larry, you were right on spot right. when you said it earlier about uh, Columbus now beginning to, to, uh, to just grip it a little bit. And uh, that's what's happening. They, mm -hmm just lost their trust in where they're playing on the lanes. On the other side of the coin, North Star has got a, their bowlers have a loose swing now. And a lot of break there, busted up what could have been a difficult spare, but.
Star just needs to show up and finish here. It's going to be two and two. And that open will give the game to Lincoln North Star. The best that Columbus can shoot, 168. Already Lincoln North Star with 176 in the eighth. If they just decided to not bowl the rest of the game. So that does even it at two apiece, and what a change. You know, who would have thought we would be at 2-2 after Columbus comes out of the gate, 230-246. Figured by about right now, we'd be watching the Class C match right. after the first two games. No kidding. It's a better shot. Well, you're right on when you talk about Dwayne DeMode and getting his kids' heads back in it, because you saw him after being down 2-0 get very vocal and right in the face and we're looking them right in the eyes and challenging them to get it done. And that's exactly what his players have done and they have responded. Well, Week 10 there. Like any other sport, bowling's a game of, uh, of emotion and momentum. And uh, it's very apparent. And uh, all it needs is just uh, something to, to set it off and to change momentum. And I do believe you're right with uh, Brandon Allgood's uh, little blowout of the 7-10 there yep. at the end of that uh, that second game made him think, hey, we've got a chance here. We're, right. we're beginning to hit the pocket. So Columbus now, you know, trying to get itself lined up for the fifth game. That's two good shots there. So the North Star Navigators have been here before, been at state before. They were third in 2009 and 10, fifth in eight and nine, sixth in 2006 and 7, so they've certainly been to the state championships. First time in the finals and looking for their first state championship. Dwayne DeMode in his fifth season, and Muth doubles up in the tenth. Maybe that will provide the spark as they have a three-bag that the Discoverers need. Fast with the approach there, but end result was great. Well, if you want to win in this Baker showdown, you better shoot 215 or better. You're not going to be close. Just tremendous scores all day today. That's all right. Trev Muth just saying, let's get this done. Let's get it over with. No excuses. So Columbus finishes with 165. North Star. We'll shoot a 220, depending on whether he picks it up five or six. And we are all even at two. Well, this has been great, Larry. This has been very entertaining. We've had uh, great matches. Not too many snoozers. We're seeing all sorts of different fundamental styles of bowling, left-handed, right-handed. So all even, there's Dwayne DeMode of the North Star Navigators. A lot of credit, you know, goes to Dwayne DeMode. He played a very pivotal role early on in the development of this arena-style finals. He was one of the guys that did so much work in putting up the netting and putting up the backdrops and setting up the bleachers and creating this arena feel. And it must be very gratifying for Dwayne as you see how excited he's getting. It must be exciting for him to be one of the guys responsible for creating this arena and now to be here with his team. I mean, Dwayne's got to have one or two less Red Bulls before he comes into the comes into the arena well, next time. It's, <laughs> it's interesting you say that. Starting to get a little pale there. It's interesting you say that because as I walked out between matches, somebody said, you better tell Dwayne to lay off the Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, I think he's had a few. Well, Dwayne's just been such an integral part of the bowling community in Lincoln for so long. And you're right, Larry. He, the first arena setting we had here, he was the the main architect and did most of the grunt work behind yep. it. So, well, they know what it comes down to now. It comes down to this game. So, it's almost like a football game. You want to eliminate turnovers. Don't want to give your opponent an opportunity to capitalize and take the lead while they're sitting on the bench. Krings to lead it off for Columbus. What a start. There we go. Just what you need. 
This makes the spare here. Some people wonder why you put one of your top bowlers at the front of your lineup in Baker. That's why. Exactly. It can provide the momentum necessary to carry you. And that was a huge shot by Dylan Cruz. You need a strong anchor bowler. You need a strong bowler in frames 5 and 10. But yep. you are 100% right. You want to get momentum on your side. This young man kind of lost it a little bit here in, the, in games three and four. Let's see if he gets back online here. And Scav goes left and carries the Brooklyn. Breaks, breaks in momentum, yep. Larry. You never know when it's going to happen. Well, you can just feel the tension in the arena. Coming down to a fifth and deciding game. Just stroked right up the boards. Got it. What a shot by Skidoris. On his bio sheet, it says Brandon is very, very quiet. He wasn't after that, after that strike. His face was bright red as he was urging his teammates to keep it going. This is going to be a great finish. So now Mike Esch's turn to answer. Esch, the junior from Columbus. That's a great shot. Another one. Three bagger. Columbus starts out on fire. And now he offers the approach to Corey Entman to answer. Corey is just his demeanor, very confident. He's going to have to get up, though. Oh, got it. Did. Boy, Look you talk that. about cool. Oh. For just a sophomore, a little bit of ice water running through those veins. A little wide, leaves the washout. That's no man's land. That's out of bounds out there. Out of bounds from about the sixth, fifth or sixth board out on the right-hand side of the lane. Boy, the stars can feel it. You heard the crowd. Zach Zorns, co-captain, tugged it a little bit. He's got a skid, crossed over. That will keep the roughly 10 pin advantage on the side of the Discoverers. Look at this. Great conversion. <laughs> what a shot. Pressure for Derek Heyer. And he comes through. Now Zorns need to convert. Good cover. Tit for tat here in the Class A State Championship. Nine pins separate these two teams. And this game is for the championship. All even at two. Move comes in right. Five, ten stands and he carries. What a shot by Move. The old school wall shot there, Larry. North Star's got to answer right here, right now. It's got to move. Oh, that's not what you want with a strike working for your opponent. I would say in this situation, you've got to try to convert this. This is a makeable spare, the two and the four and the ten. Ball's got to get all the way to the left side of the two. Slide the two over to the right to pick up the ten. I think he's got to go for it, Larry. I think so, too. Down by 12, you got to give it a run. And that's got a chance. Mm. Yeah. Strike so, here by, I'm sorry, strike here by Columbus. Puts him in front by 33. What a finish here in the Boys Class A State Championship. 94-107 plus for Columbus. Well, the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation proud to have its state championship competition broadcast throughout the state of Nebraska. For more information about high school bowling, you can check out the website at nhsbf.com. And with matches and finishes like this, why wouldn't you? What an exciting finish. Great shot. What a ball by Hampton. He was a sub that came in, I do believe, yep. in the middle of the, at the end of the second game, Larry, and he has been right there for them. 
Now Dylan Krings trying to throw a double onto what he started back in the first with a strike. Turns over on that one. Ring and 10. Maybe just a little bit of adrenaline there. A couple of miles an hour, yep. just, uh, just a little bit fast, caused that ball to finish a little late. Still a great shot, though, for a bunch of young men that are barely teenagers. Uh, throw the ball like this, right. it's just phenomenal talent out here. Brandon Skadoris averages 194. Big double opportunity. He's got to sit. Ooh. Maybe needed to finish. And that, that was dangerously close yes, to a 7 10 again. Now both teams are going to have to rely on their spare shooting yep. to keep them in the match. First one that misses a spare may end up putting their team in harm's way of losing. Cross lane at the 10. More speed, less hook. Nice and aggressive and a great shot. So Dylan Krings can feel good about what he's done for his discoverers. And he will be done for the match and sit back and watch and see if his teammates can deliver this state championship back to Columbus. We said earlier how teams have had trouble cross lane at the seven pin. That's how to do it, more right direct there. right at it. Great shot by Skidoris. And so now if the Gators are going to get back into it, they'll have to string some together. But first we'll take a look at Dylan Ganskow. Ganskow crossed over strike double in the second. Right in the middle of that three bagger, which gave them this 15 pin lead. That one sends the messenger across. That, that, can, that can demoralize your opponents. It really can. When you get the scout like that off the wall, it just blows all the way over to the seven pin side, back over and takes out the 10. North Star's got to answer with a strike here, Larry, or it might be too late. Down now by 23 pins. That's got to get up. Mm. Right. Columbus on pace to be in the 220s. Could shoot 250. North Star now is on pace to be about 190. Now here's Mike Esch. Esch, great ball, and you can see the swing suddenly just loosening up for Columbus. That, I think, right there is enough to get the trophy engraved. It's not quite enough, but it's just They've about. Plugged in the engraving machine, yep. haven't they? Has to convert this to have a chance. Otherwise, the best North Star will be able to shoot will be 190. 99, that's a chance. Oh, what a shot! It's not over yet, Larry. Off the wall! It's a great cover by Impman. Now you're Derek higher up on the approach, and you're thinking, my gosh, I may have to strike now. It's left. A little high. Almost. Um, Still it's almost a must. Yeah, it, it, it's a must strike here for North Star. They have to punch out. Yes. That's get up. Just mm. and on a spare that that just best the, the best they can shoot with a spare and go off the sheet would be 189. Columbus is already well. Ooh. And we're in the boy oh boy. How much does that gutter hurt after seeing that? Oh. Not going to matter, Larry. Nope. Columbus is your state champions, yep. and, and if they needed to punch out, they had a chance if they would have punched. But they still would have had That'll to. That'll do it. Still would have had to strike out. To yep. Columbus just, you know. They won well. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. It, this was more about what Columbus did than anything else. Right. And they came out of the shoot 230, 246. They're going to close. Is that going to fall? No, it'll stand. But they're going to close it. Lost About away a little. Yep. Yeah, lo just just a little bit lost away in the middle. But uh, uh, they this is uh, both teams easily could have went either way here. But uh, well, 
enough. Went by 200. And it is enough. Nick Jackson will close it out for the North Star Navigators, but you see the celebration. The Columbus Discoverers are your Class A state champs. Jackson will finish it out, trips that. Well, that was entertaining. That was very good. That was great competition. That was uh, just, uh, again, a lot of talent. You gotta give both coaches credit for being able to bring their teams up from the yep. highs and lows of that match. A lot of highs and lows. So a great finish there by Nick Jackson. But a tough loss for the Gators and congratulations to the Class A state champs, the Columbus Discoverers who came out with a 230 and 246 first two Baker games set really put the pressure on North Star the Gators answered but in the end it was the Discoverers winning the Class A state championship when we come back we'll hear from the champs award the trophies it's all coming up on NAT Sports What inspired me to pursue a career in technology was the fact that I have kids. We need the internet. They wouldn't be able to do any of their research without it. It's really important for our children to think science and technology is important. I believe that all kids should look towards technology because that's where the world is going. Get involved in all of the science activities because all of that experience can lead you a long way. To find out what you can do to inspire a young person, visit connectamillionminds.com. Sports is on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash NET Sports to get all the latest NET Sports updates. While you're there, comment on our wall, watch highlights from all our live events, see our upcoming schedule, and check out our in-depth background features. I cried over there last year. Uh, yeah, that was me. Ironically, the tallest member of the Husker squad. It's all on facebook.com slash NET Sports. I'm Fred Knapp from NET News. I'd like to invite you to go online with NET News for our one-on-one -on -one discussions with Nebraska policymakers each week on Capital Conversations. We'll explore issues important to Nebraskans and get to know the state's decision makers. Watch online, netnebraska.org slash Capital Conversations or on Facebook at NET News Nebraska. And welcome back to Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska. The Class A State Championship in the books, and the Columbus Discoverers knock off the North Stars in five in the final game, 200 to 176. I want to remind you, you can preserve these memories for a lifetime and order a DVD of the State High School Bowling Federation Championships by logging on to nhsbf.com. Just follow the links and preserve your state championship memories for a lifetime. I know three guys who are going to be ordering DVDs, and they're all with Steve Simpak. We are, we are right here with our champions here in 2010. The, both the coaches, Coach Andrew McCarthy and Rick Krings from the Columbus High School Discoverers and Derek Heyer. Derek, somehow you're related to the Heyers that had a bowling center up and around the Humphrey area, I do believe. Uh, how, how are you related to them? Um, that'd be my grandpa and grandma. Well, they were very good friends of mine, Vernon Corinne Heyer up there. So you grew up in the bowling alley. The, the only senior on the team, uh, boy, how was the emotions of the match and the ups and the downs? You guys just bowled out such a big lead, and then North Star got momentum and came back. What, what were you guys talking about there? We just had to keep our heads up high and make sure we kept doing our thing and picking up spares. I mean, it's about all we could do. And, you know, I was talking to uh, Larry in the booth earlier about, I remember in 2009, I think when you guys won your last state championship, uh, I think, were you on the team back then? I think no, you're your, your assistant coach back then. Well, you look young. You could have been on the team. But, the, but uh, you guys have always been known for great spare shooting ability. And I know we saw a couple of times in the state finals, the Columbus teams, with great spare shooting. Uh, do you just demand these boys to practice spares in practice? Just in practice, just work on spares all the time and 
strikes will come and spares are just the key. That's right. Well, we saw it today. Well, congratulations, guys. Some... Columbus discovers your 2010 Boys Class A State Championship Finals. Larry, back to you in the booth. All right, Cecil, so thanks very much. Congratulations to both teams, the Discoverers and the Navigators, for making it here to the Class A State Championship. And with the trophy presentation, we go to our public address announcer, Greg Porchy. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice round of applause for our two finalists? And now for the awards presentation, your Class A boys runner-up, the Lincoln North Star Navigators. Coaches Dale Etman Jr. and Dwayne DeMood. Nick Jackson. Brandon Skidoris. Corey Edmond. Zach Zorns. Brandon Allgood. And Seth Hampton. Gentlemen, here is your runner-up trophy. Congratulations to the Lincoln North Star Navigators, your Class A runner-ups. Now, here is your 2010-2011 Class A Boys Champions, the Columbus Discoverers. Discoverers coached by Rick Krings and Andrew McCarthy. Dylan Krings. Justin Olson. Dylan Ganskow. Mike Esch. Trev Muth. And Derek Heyer. Gentlemen, here is your championship trophy. Once again, I'd like to congratulate the 2010-2011 Columbus Discoverers, your Class A champions. This concludes our award presentation for the Class A championships. So congratulations once again to the Columbus Discoverers, your Class A state champs. When we come back, our final showdown of the morning, it's Class C, Wisner Pilger takes on Ravenna for the state championship. When we come back, the Sun Valley Ladies. from your Nebraska Department of Roads. From the soulful streets of the Motor City came music so distinctive it had its own name. Motown. Join the President and the First Lady and some of today's brightest stars. Cheryl Crow, Jamie Foxx, John Legend, Seal, Smokey Robinson, and many others in a celebration of the music that energized a generation. The Motown Sound, in performance at the White House. Tuesday night at 7 Central Time on NET1. Have you considered arranging an estate gift to NET? 
Now, your legacy can live on through NET sports programs made possible by your gift to the NET endowment. You can ensure that future Nebraskans continue to enjoy college and high school sports action that only NET delivers. Call me personally to discuss your estate gift to the NET Foundation. Nebraska state senators are considering Arizona-style legislation allowing law enforcement to check the immigration status of people they stop. It's a controversial idea, and NET News is listening to what lawmakers and Nebraskans have to say. Join NET News reporter Fred Knapp for Nebraska's Talking Illegal Immigration and a discussion of the bill's pros and cons. Monday night at 10 Central on NET One and NET HD. Welcome back to Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska, along with Steve Simpek. I'm Larry Putnam. I want to remind everybody that you can reserve your state high school championship memories for a lifetime by getting a DVD of the NHSBF championships. To get one, just log on to www.nhsbf.com, and you can preserve these state championship memories for the rest of your life. Log on now. DVDs available from the NHSBF. Well, our final state championship of the day, we've already crowned three champions. Now we move to Class C. For a state championship showdown between Wisner Pilger, the Gators, and Ravenna Blue Jays. Here's a look at Krista Geese's Wisner Pilger Gators. Drennan Hengst is a senior, as is Phil Wolt. Dennis Tomka, a sophomore. Jake Schultz is a senior. Tanner Schmidt, a junior. They will be taking on the Ravenna Blue Jays, led by Daniel Schmidt. Riley Pates is a sophomore, three seniors. Ryan Slocum, Jacob McWiggan, and Kelly McFadden. And then two freshmen, Dexter Barrett and Matthew Nozicka. That's a look at the lineups for the Ravenna Blue Jays and the Wisner Pilger Gators. We will crown a state champ when we come back to Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska. The NHSBF State Championships conclude on NET when we come back. Brought to you in part by the Ellen and Marcia Bear Foundation and by the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation, encouraging high schools to sanction the sport of bowling across Nebraska. Well, the consumer is demanding food safety, and, and that's one reason that you know, we've all got the attitude we do are raising in the food in the United States to keep a safe, safe food chain for our consumer because you know, we never want to lose that consumer as our buyer of our product. Nebraska soybean farmers and the Soybean Checkoff support the Nebraska poultry and livestock producers as our farming neighbors and soybean meal customers. Power Drive Electric Car Program gives high school students a hands-on way to apply studies, learn about electricity and energy efficiency, and develop skills that will benefit them throughout their lives. Nebraska Public Power District encourages students and teachers to get involved. Schools have the power to make it happen. For information on Power Drive, visit oppd.com or nppd.com. A lot of kids will say, well, you know, you can't have a good time anymore without drinking. Well, the interesting thing about young people drinking excessively is that they look like regular young people. They don't look any different wasted, plastered, or feeling no pain. They all mean the same thing, drunk. Slamming down five drinks or even more within a couple hours. It happens a lot, and it happens to be the very definition of binge drinking. Watch Binge, an NET television production, Friday night at 7.30 and 10.30 Central on NET One and NET HD. Along with Steve Sempek, I'm Larry Putney. Great to have you back as we wrap up the morning long state championship NHSBF competition. And we will close it out here in Class C. I want to remind everybody, if you'd like more information on high school bowling, you can go to NHSBF.com. We're thrilled to be able to bring you the state high school bowling championships from border to border on NET. So obviously a lot to learn about high school bowling in the state of Nebraska, a new and emerging sport. You can find out everything you need to know 
at nhsbf.com. That's been a good day so far, Steve. We've had some terrific matches. You take a look at Class A, which just finished up, and what a battle that was between North Star and Columbus. Columbus obviously coming back and winning it. We could have another good one on tap here in Class C as well. Both teams here have been in state competition before. And yes, that Columbus match was uh, was just fantastic with Lincoln North Star. It was uh, about as exciting as you can get coming down to the last ball in the last frame. So we start things out. Wisner Pilger Gators get going and right away, Drennan Hengst, the senior. Gives them the early strike. So now up on the right lane is Brian Slocum. Slocum is a senior. He averages 186. Crosses over and Slocum carries as well. So back to back strikes to open it up. Now back up on the left lane. Here's Phil Wolt, Philip Wolt. Boy, good shot by Philip. Everybody right in the pocket so yep. far. Now it's Kelly McFadden's turn. Kelly is a senior. Averaged 160, I'm sorry, 176 in conference play. Good ball by McFadden, also leaving a 10 pin. So identical starts for these two teams from Northeast Nebraska. I'm sorry. Wizard yeah, Pilger from Northeast yeah, Nebraska, Ravenna, Ravenna a little west. Yep. Get your map quest there going there. <laughs> Ravenna is Don and Pam Herbert's bowling center in Ravenna. The Sport Bowl just yep. is one of the nicest little, cleanest little bowling centers you're going to step foot in with. Probably, I'd put their, I'd, I'd rank their cheeseburger in the top five of the bowling center cheeseburger rating scale. Yep. Very good food, and they've uh, run also on the ground floor supporting high school bowling when we formed, and uh, Coach. Don Herbert is the assistant coach for the boys team. Tanner Schmidt with the strike. Schmidt the junior with a big shot. Nobody having trouble finding the pockets so far, but having a little trouble on those corner pin spares though. Both 10 pins were missed there, so. Here's Riley Pates. Pates just a sophomore. Pates comes up a little high, leaves the 6'10". At the Sport Bowl in Ravenna, Don and Pam Herbert have owned the bowling center uh, for a long time. And Don and Pam are good friends. They're going to get mad at me. I'm making them sound old. But uh, uh, one of the most successful junior bowling programs uh, that we've probably ever had in the state of Nebraska. For an eight-lane center, uh, you know, they, their numbers were over 100 for a long, 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 long time. And uh, they would even have youth leagues after school uh, because they couldn't hold anymore, <laughs> have any more room on Saturdays. And, uh, so all of this translates into future high school bowlers and hopefully future adult league bowlers. Mm -hmm. oh. Chops the head pin off. Well, it's a strikes only game yeah. it looks like here. We're having a little trouble with the spares. Three strikes, four opens between the two teams through three and a half frames. Wisner Pilger with a lead, but Ravenna can cut into that with a mark here. Jacob McGuigan. Not a bad ball by McGuigan, leaves the soft 10. So back up on the left lane is Drennan Hinkst. Drennan's been a past participant on this TV show, Larry. Wisner in the state finals a few years back. Drennan was in the lineup. Good shot by Hengst. Just a reminder, we're coming off of both the Class B and A championships. So a reminder, if you were with us early this morning when we began in Class D, Class C and Class D have four bowlers. So your first and second bowler of each game will actually bowl three frames in an individual game, and not just two as you see in Class A and B. So here's the second shot of the first five frames for Brian Slocum. And Slocum for the second time puts 10 in the pit. Very, very uh, contemporary release. A lot of revolutions on the ball. Maximum result there. Bowling lane surface here at Sun Valley Lanes, synthetic lanes. 
Here's the banners from 2007. Sean Wisner mm -hmm. in the last state tournament trip here. Oh, almost, almost with the wiggle. It. And still looking for our first spare here. That's right. Match number one here. And looks like we got a little pin spotter problem there on 28, which we'll get taken care of. And uh, I should mention that uh, the coaches for Wisner Pilger, Krista Geese and Kathy Geese, mother daughter, also the owners of Wisner Lanes, which I would put in the rank top five rankings of the best piece of prime rib I've had at a bowling alley. <laughs> Very good little restaurant up there off of 275. If you're going through northeast Nebraska, the coachman's there. They great food. We've always made a point to bowl tournaments up there just to go eat. <laughs> there we go. Good shot by Philip Wool. Philip's older brother Adam also bowled for Wisner Pilger. He was part of that 2007 banner that was hung on the wall here and has Wisner Pilger's name on it. Part of that team. Crossed over there. Riley Pates. It's pretty. It's pretty uh, obvious that uh, the boys know about where to throw for their strike line on their t on their first ball, uh, but still struggling with the proper angle to take on spares. Uh, that right there is really the, the first big miss we've had. That was Tanner Schmidt from Wisner Pilger uh, to pull the ball past the head pin. So, all right, we're on the board with a spare. There finally. we go, Riley Pates converts. And now Tanner Schmidt will try to do the same. A little tougher here with the one three eight, but that's going to be right there. Sure. Well, good conversion by Schmidt. So back up on the left lane now is Jacob McWiggin. McWiggin, very consistent spare shooter, two-year starter, was all district in football as well. So a good athlete is McWiggin, and he. Puts 10 down. See the contemporary cupped wrist release. There's only a lot of hook. It's Jake Schultz. Schultz is senior for the Gators. Speaking of power release, watch this right here. He's grabbing a handful, isn't he? Yes. Boy, what a ball. He's playing right in the center of the lane where the most oil is. And it's going to be about the only opportunity for Brian Slocum's going to be the bowler with probably the best opportunity to navigate through that oil. Mm -hmm. Open frame for Wisner. So they're trying to hang on the lead, but with the double for Ravenna and at frames eight and nine, mm -hmm. Ravenna has the lead on the bench. Big shot here for Ravenna. Strike would give them a lead. Got it. What a shot. Boy, big ball there to come from behind. And so now a near must strike situation for Wisner Pilger. Drennan Hinks up on the right lane. He's bowling in the ninth frame. Whereas on the left lane, Kelly McFadden is bowling in the tenth frame. But a three bagger for Ravenna. Good shot there, Larry. Mixed it up. Got it. Off the wall. Gets the six. I'm sorry, the four seven four five seven off the wall. Used to be back in the 60s and 70s. Dick Weber made his legacy by playing the old wall shot, mm -hmm. just like that. And uh, so now we've got an interesting. Oh, well, we've got a chance at a tie here again. The possible 172 for Ravenna. The strike this, here, though, would. A strike here, though, would give Wiesner Pilger a near win. Yes. Got it. Stripped out that 10 pin. What a shot by Wolt. Just needs good count now for Wisner to wrap up game one here. So 172. Yep. Just, just about keep it on the keep lane. Keep it on the lane, yep. But he had to have that first one, didn't he? Well, we saw the. Class A match just uh, just finished that uh, 
We watched the Columbus boys race out to a two quick two game lead and uh, we sat here and looked at each other and thought that uh, mm -hmm. we were going to start this match early as it just looked like they were going to tear through the field and uh, North Star comes back and wins the remaining two games and then it still comes down to the 10th frame. So nothing, uh, nothing too catastrophic by losing that game one. You just need to do exactly what those two coaches did in the Class A finals is regroup your team, get them together. Make them understand uh, the moves they need to make on the lanes to execute a little better. Just keep your head about you. Pick up your spares. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of spares for 178, 172, Larry. A lot of spares missed here. Those could have easily been in the 220s. Easily. So Wisner Pilger jumps out to the early lead. One game to none. Friday afternoon on NET2, Nebraska Stories. Shows us the early days of television in Nebraska with longtime broadcaster Lita Powell Drake. Plus, you can meet an Omaha artist that paints cancer survivors and see the photographs of one Nebraska photographer, Don Dahl, showcasing our state and the people who call themselves Nebraskans. That's Nebraska Stories, and you can catch it 3.30 Central on NET2, or you can visit the website, netnebraska.org slash Nebraska Stories. Another strike to lead off the game. We've had our share of strikes, and, but as it usually does, if we get to a game four and a game five, it's going to come down to spares and accuracy. Hanks tugged that one a little bit, tries to get, I got the two out of the eight, so left the eight pin. Now back up on that left lane, Kelly McFadden. McFadden with a nice game as well as he Turns it up quite a bit inside, needs to sit. He, he got the eight off of the two, so the three, I'm sorry. All district football player. He's going to go to, go to college for physics and robotics. Cross lane, again, to get our spares under control here. Switching bowling balls, gonna go to something a little straighter for the spare. They had a good cover. That's a good move. Some some uh, some bowlers are more than willing to just kill their shot. They use their same bowling ball all the time, but they'll take the hook off of it. They'll collapse their wrist so the ball goes straighter. Some prefer using a different ball. That's going to have to get up. Set it down a little too far outside. You can see the progression of both of these programs through their finishing or finishes here at the. State High School Bowling Championships. Ravenna first making it back in 2009, then in 2010 qualified again, and now in 2011 in the championship match. Usually takes a couple of times down here to get used to the environment, understand what it's all about, figure out the format, be comfortable with the surroundings. Well, it's just uh, it's an intimate setting, the, the arena finals here. It's, it's uh, and, and we commented on this earlier about how this even though that there's not uh, 10, 15,000 people in here, as you'd see at, at state volleyball or state basketball, it's, uh, it, it's an intimate setting. The crowd is right on top of you, and we've had great crowds all weekend. Uh, the standing room only, uh, I'm sure uh, if the fire marshal would have came into any of the four bowling centers on Saturday, uh, they would have uh, probably been shocked at how many people were inside there. And uh, just bowling is just such a, a oh. great addition. That that's going to have to be respot. That's going to be a six pin, and we'll have to have that reset back up. The machine detected it was wobbling enough where it, the machine actually thought it was uh, going to be a, a strike. Strike, right? Mm -hmm. So that'll be reset. But you know the the. Uh, Having the fans so close on top of you here in the arena setting, it, it's a little bit different than, than what you're going to find at uh, a larger arena, in my opinion. Kind of hung on to that one a little bit. Saw the ball leave his hand, and his, instead of the ball going out onto the lane, it went up into the air first, and that usually will cause the ball to be left of target. But uh, Dennis needs to just regroup a tough 1 5 spare. Got our six pin back up now on 27, so. Better yeah. job there at the spare. And a good cover on the one five. Oh, good cover by Dennis Tomka. In the game for Wisner Pilger.
And here's Jacob McGuigan, the senior for Ravenna. It's really an outstanding group of seniors for this Blue Jay team. Ryan Slocum, Jacob McGuigan, Kelly McFadden, all three of those seniors on Ravilla really dedicated their time, according to Coach Daniel Schmidt. Put in a lot of time in the off season as well to practice, travel to other towns, bowl in tournaments, and really improve their game. And certainly shows a couple of very strong bowlers on that Ravenna Blue Jay squad. Another good shot there. And good carry as well. Call Brian the power bowler on the team. Four-year starter. Ah, great shot there on the baby split. This was the Pilger now. Now we're seeing some spares, Larry, which uh, is uh, going to keep this match tight. Good cover there by Jake Schultz. Still about a 27-pin about a lead for Ravenna. With a strike working in frame five. Good camera angle of the grip for the bowling ball there, and uh, mm -hmm. just just kind of lost that to the right a little bit. Ball came off his handy with uh, being a little bit of a straighter bowler, smaller amount of hook. He really needs the ball to be going down the lane with the boards, but with the boards meaning not coming off his hand and fading to the right first. If you're a power bowler like Brian Slocum for Ravenna, you can get the ball off your hand to the right and be able to put enough lift on it to come back uh, to the pocket. So he needs to just be a little straighter. He needs to go left of the head pin here for the one, two, four. And that good finish, hook a little bit, got it. Well, unconventional, but picked it up nonetheless. A lot of ways to skin a cat, as you say. Hey, I want to remind everybody, it's easier than ever to stay in touch with NET Sports. You can become a fan of our NET page on Facebook at facebook.com slash NET Sports. Find out what, ha what is happening behind the scenes and also what's coming up on NET Sports. Become a fan of NET on Facebook. Pair of number ones up here. You get Philip Wold on the left hand lane for Wisner Pilger. Kelly McFadden on the right hand, McFadden that is, excuse me, on the right hand lane. Oh. Kick out the two, four, five, gets the four and the five to fall. So a couple of easy spares, although going cross lane here. Mm -hmm. We've seen our share missed, so that's going to come off his hand and go to the left. And he jinxed him. Well, you know, we've uh, you've done that more than yeah. once today, haven't you? We've, we've pretty much ruined <laughs> careers here on the show. <laughs> a good cover there by Kelly McFadden. Puts Ravenna back in the lead now. With count, they'll be ahead by 20 plus going into the seventh frame. So Wisner's got to regroup here. Here's Dennis Tomka, the sophomore, up on the left lane for Wisner Pilger. Way out on the lane there that time. A lot of loft to lead that hook. Now back up on the right lane. Riley Pates. Same, same light as well, yeah. A lot of loft there. Yep. So, an easy spare and a not so easy spare here. Spare here in Wisner will be back within 10. They had a good cover by Dennis Tomka. And Tomka said. It's always a good sign when he has butterflies in his stomach. That means he's going to strike. Wish I had that. <laughs> <laughs> Two, four, five, cross lane. That. And a good cover. Yes. So Riley Pates with the spare conversion. Here's Jake Schultz up on the left-hand lane. Fourth bowler for Wisner Pilgrim. Good hand, and it crosses over. Can't quite get that six to fall. Jake kind of lets go of the ball at, at his point of release. He 
falls away a little bit from the shot. What that means is, is as he slides, he actually steps away from the foul line, steps off to the right. Uh, see a lot of that when there's, uh, in today's game, uh, do anything you can to get as much leverage on the ball, as much hook, and even if that means you don't end up with that textbook uh, T with your foot at the foul line, you always want to try and teach to slide perpendicular to the foul line. Stays a little more in control in the spare, but a lot of oil in the center part of the lane still, Larry, as we're on our final match of the day here, and uh, a lot of oil still in the lane, so cutting through that uh, is just uh, got to be accurate. Got to go straight at him. Need to get a pin reset here on number 28. I think Jake McGuigan would just be happy with the spare. That's right. <laughs> Our commissioner of the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation, John Lacito, right there on the spot. There he is. John is calling his order in for Jimmy John's on the walkie-talkie right there. Yeah. <laughs> if only he ate that healthy, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the only Jimmy John's in Lincoln that has all fried food. So uh, good good cover there. Sometimes when you get interrupted like that yeah. and uh, machine malfunction or possibly a pin comes out of the or a ball comes out of the gutter and has to have a pin reset it can affect your concentration. But good recovery there by Kelly McGuigan. It's a pretty close match, Larry. There's Hankst and Hankst crosses over. Well, he's a good shot there and a sharp young man. Pretty much evens it up now, so Ravenna will strike working here. Will take a lead into the ninth frame or into the tenth frame, I should say. It was a little high. Leaves the four seventh. Now that does put Wisner back in the lead as Wisner will have a strike working in the ninth. Important shot here to try to get back into it, and Walt leaves that ten pin. Really needed that shot, or now some help. So all that Ravenna is going to have to do is make sure they convert this spare and get good count, and they will take game two. Ross Lane over a little bit. I think they're still okay. 20 to 46, 60. Yep. Just count is all they're going to need. Ravenna will need in that tenth frame, and that's providing the spare is picked up by Philip Wolt. Good shot. <laughs> So Phillip, best he can have is 166. Ravenna really needs just four pins here to shut out Wisner Pilger. And that'll do it. And a solid shot. So back comes Ravenna after losing game number one. We had a five game match just moments ago in Class A. We're looking for another one here in Class C. One sixty four, the score for Wisner Pilger. Going to see substitute come in for Ravenna. Baker style bowling. You can substitute in the lineup at any time. Dexter Barrent. Name like Dexter, he's made for bowling. Yes, he is. Dexter being a very popular bowling shoe company, better clue the mm -hmm. <laughs> television audience in on that as Larry will get his royalties for mentioning that name there. Larry on the Dexter bowling staff. So 183 uh, with just one open frame is, is pretty good. And uh, if you look at the Wisner Pilger score, you'll see two nines and two misses. And that's mm -hmm. your difference right there, Larry. Saw a good cover, 183 for Ravenna. And I should clarify, I'm not really on the Dexter staff. I don't want anybody at home thinking that. Uh, <laughs> Any quid pro quo going on yeah, here? You still use yeah. alley shoes, right? <laughs> That's right, and a house ball. Look at my scores, you'll know. Well, one game apiece here now. And uh, I think everybody has began to settle in just a little bit. But So starting it off on the left lane is Drennan Hanks. We Talked about how sharp that young man is. He's heading to the Rose Holman Institute of Technology at the University of Nebraska. Studying mathematics. He's a 4.0 student. Very bright young man. 
Has a pretty good game as well. Trips that four pin out of there and gives Wisner Pilger the early lead. Let's take a good look here at our power bowler, Brian Slocum. Let's see how he comes through the shot with the wrist cupped. He just kind of rushed that a little bit. Didn't really set up for very long at the beginning of his delivery. He's going to come back and get a little coaching session from his two coaches, Daniel Schmidt and Don Herbert. Boy, good shot. So doubling up for Wisner Pilger is Philip Wolt. So a nice shot by Wolt. Switching to a hard plastic ball for <laughs> the spare. That still hooked a little bit, didn't yes, it? Yes, it did. He, <laughs> A little bit of hand in there. As much as I hooked a hook, a brand new resin ball that's <laughs> 20 grit sandpaper used on it. Yeah. Wisner can jump on top. A little We've bit high there. Yeah. Yep. We've seen the spare, seen this spare miss several different times too, in different ways. Best thing to do if uh, I would take a page out of, uh, out of the book uh, using the hard plastic ball to go with the spare straight so you don't risk hooking it by or sliding by. Focus on that three and the six pin. If you hit the ball between the three and the six squarely, it'll take out the 10 automatically. A little bit cross lane. And he did exactly that. Not a good cover. A nice shot by Dennis Tompkins. This is a little different set of circumstances here, leaving the two and the eight. Double wood. Phillips got to get the ball to the right. Hook it in with both pins and the ball taking each other out. Very good. So Good wood. shot by McFadden. So Wizard Pilger still clinging to that lead that they had after doubling up in the first two frames. About a 10-pin advantage. Here's Jake Schultz again. Schultz with a nice shot, rings a 10. Jake's, sorry, Larry, go ahead. No. Well, you're playing right on that oil line is what I was going to say. The oil is the heaviest right around the 10th board, the second arrow. He's right there on that line where the, where the oil becomes the heaviest and the ball would hook if it's any further right of that. And it's, man, get it out. Maybe. Got it, Riley Pates. Little pin action and a big smile. You bet. Those are the kinds that can kind of loosen you up a little bit, get you going. Skid, and those are the kinds that tighten you up and make you a little tense. So you saw a little bit of both there on each lane. Well, Ravenna can get right back in it within a couple of pins here with a strike here that'll give him a double in frames three and four. Actually set him up to take the lead. McGuigan now. Straight up the outside boards, needs it. Looks like maybe he didn't get all of that one. Dropped off his hand. Back up is Drennan Hankst. Hankst high game, 267 in lanes. Pretty solid shot there, and leaves the five pin. Ball never went into a roll. It was a good shot. It was a very safe shot, but that ball right in the center portion of the lane was pretty much fading most of the way down and uh, caused that five pin to stand there at the end. It's all right, though. Safe shot. One, two, four spare here. Good cover. Jake McGuigan with a sigh of relief there. I think he expected that ball to not make it over to the left of the head pin, so. Pretty senior laden team for Ravenna. We just talked about that before, and just so proud of this senior class for them and how hard they've worked to get better. This is a sport nowadays, Steve, where a lot of people show up for league and expect to average 220. And the day of practicing and going out and working on your game is long since gone. And that's a not a. Don't get me on my soapbox, Larry, because I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a pretty strong advocate that uh, we probably would have been better off in competitive bowling if the 
technology wouldn't have uh, just exploded quickly, but. Yep. Hey, I want to remind everybody you have many options to gather information, but when it comes to in-depth, thoughtful reporting on Nebraska News, your best option is NET News. So watch, stream, listen. Stay informed with NET News, and you can stay informed at netnebraska.org slash news. Philip Wolf. Another strike. Philip's been uh, money so far yes, for him. He has. Nice tight game here in game three. Big shot here could give Ravenna a commanding lead. Leaves the bucket. Wisner can take a 25 pin lead here with a double in frame six and seven. Dennis Tomka has a chance to get him out in front. That needs to hook. <laughs> And it did. Not not a bad lead for, I'm sure, off his hand, what he thought was trouble. McFadden, did he cover the bucket? He's got it. It's a very good shot there. Not easy. It gives them a three-pin advantage through five frames. Both teams have marked in the sixth. Tomkit trying to mark here in the seventh, and he does. So good coverage. We talked a little bit about Wisner Pilger and how their route to get here to this state championship match. We mentioned they knocked off Donovan Trumbull in their first Baker head-to-head -head best of five match. Then they beat Wayne in the semifinals. Significant for Wisner in that this is, we mentioned, the third time that the Gators have been down here to state. In the previous two years they were here, they faced Wayne, the Blue Devils, who have a very strong program and have been a terrific uh, powerhouse in Class C. They won the state championship last year, did Wayne. But each of the last two years that Wisner Pilger has been down here, they've lost to Wayne. Mm -hmm. So when you come back and all of a sudden you have that team that's knocked you off every year you've been here and you're facing them in the semifinals, there's always that little bit of here we go again, right? That's right. Be able to battle through that and win it three to two in a tough match really speaks volumes to what these Gators have accomplished in getting here. Chance to increase their lead to about 38 pins with a strike here. Strike working in the eighth. Drennan Hinks has been spot on so far, but didn't get that one far enough, right? All even now. Oh, no, sorry, make it. Well, they're going to yep, remain in the lead here. We're yep. going to need to get Ravenna caught up here a little bit. They're a frame behind, but strike here is going to go a long way to getting him caught up, Larry. Mm -hmm. Needs to sit. Ooh. Well, all even at 135 in the seventh. A mark here, a necessity for Ravenna to stay even, and Hengst needs to pick up this 310. Get out there. Mm, just a little too heavy on that three pin, which is the front pin. Well, it gives Ravenna a chance to get back in the match here. As a matter of fact, a spare here by Jacob McGuigan. And another mark yep. in the ninth. Give them the lead. Yes, sir. So 163 in the ninth for Wisner Pilger. That should be an 8 1 in the ninth. And 163. And a good shot. Boy, clutch shot by Mr. Wolt. And now get a clutch shot from that guy right there. McQuiggan turns it up a bit. Get Slocum. Kind of a not a great break by four, Brian Slocum. He's got to convert it now with a strike working for Wisner Pilger in the tenth. Potential 193. Set and carry. And you are right. This is almost a must spare, otherwise they can be shut out. Oh, what a shot. What a play by Slocum. That was big. Well, Ravenna can't get shut out right now. So now they can't. No, yeah, they mm -hmm. can't. But this, uh, that second strike by uh, Wisner Pilgers, 
Philip Walton, the 10th frame, is going to force them to strike on the first ball in the 10th here. Going to force Ravenna to get the first strike. Yep. Well, oh, well, <laughs> count, uh, yeah, that's just enough. They're still going to have to strike, so. Uh, well, you're right, Larry, maybe not. We need a mark here and some count. And that's not the easiest spare in the world, especially nope. when you're going cross lane. But now he needs eight spare strike to win, eight spare nine ties. Yeah, you see everybody looking at the score, figuring it out. Is that right? Does he have to pick this up and get nine? Yes, he does. Nine ties it. Cross lane at the 2-5. He elects to go straight at it, and it does. So a nice cover there. Now the last component and the more difficult component to winning this is he must strike here for the win. Nine, and it's a tie. And get that rule book out, Larry. How's the tie work? Uh, one more time. It's a you pick a player, I pick a player as a coach, and whoever gets the most knocked down in one ball wins that game. And he got it. <laughs> Didn't come down to the tie. Got the mixer and the big shot by Kelly McFadden. Comes through and Ravenna wins it 191 to 190. The key in that is the count in the 10th yep. frame from Wisner Pilger. Yep. That was the key. It was uh, trying to seven pins. Do a little bit better than seven, but that's all right, though. Yep. Still close. Two to one now. Advantage Ravenna. <laughs> Did you? I don't know if you just. I read lip a little bit, read his lips. Kelly said, I didn't know that I had to have a strike. <laughs> he looked yeah. around and said, I didn't know that. That might have been a, a, a good thing. A, it might have been on purpose from the coaches. <laughs> That's right. right. Back up quickly is Ravenna. All right, so Ravenna with that win now takes a two games to one lead over the Gators. So Ravenna looking to close this out and win a state championship with a win here in game four. Wisner Pilger, Wisner Pilger needs a win to extend it to a fifth. Oh boy, good shot. That was a good shot. Right down the boards, as we said earlier. Stayed on line, just bad break. Couldn't have thrown it any better. It's to hook. Just a little light. Well, had he had that result, we might still be bowling in the last mm -hmm. game. <laughs> yes. It was a very similar shot. Very good cross lane spare there. You yep. see he flattens the ball out, takes the, the left right to left hook off of it, throws it straight at the 10. And now cross lane at the 7. Okay. So it'll be interesting as we start to get closer to the end of this game. Now that the championship is on the line, do they remain nice and loose and make good shots, or does that pressure start to build a little bit as they go after the title? Well, I would uh, side on the side of nerves yeah. if it was me and you up there. Uh, just uh, yep. we saw some some matches uh, in the girls' uh, uh, in, in girls' qualifying play and, and also in the state play. With, Bad breaks has cost people state championships. So I guess you're just never going to know. But if you keep the ball in and around the pocket and pick up your simple single pin and maybe two pin spares, you're going to have a chance. And a good cover, necessary cover. After the hot start by Ravenna. So now back up, Jacob McGuigan. Wigan planning on attending Hastings Community College, information technology. High game of 256, high series 623. Straight down the boards, just maybe a board, board and a half high there, leaving the four. Tanner Schmidt now in Not for. Not a bad. Well, I got that 10 out of there. Tanner, Tanner <laughs> subbed in for Wisner Pilger. He's a junior. Boy, almost to a man when you look through the bio sheets of these Wisner Pilger guys. Is McGuigan converts the spare. As you look through the bio sheets for Wisner Pilger, 
best moment in bowling or my best moment this year is beating Wayne. <laughs> It's like Nebraska, Oklahoma used to be, you know. <laughs> that was their two northeast Nebraska schools. I think I have my geography right there with yes, the and Wayne. So they see each other frequently, I'm sure. First big split we've seen in a while. So Wisner Pilger just continues to plug along. They are clean through three. It seems like I don't know if you've noticed this, but it Wis but Ravenna is the team that's getting up and going. Wisner Pilger much more deliberate. Takes their time. Good trip of the five there. And the carry by Jake Schultz. Well, right here for Brian Slocum. One pin is plenty here with a little bit of a lead. Yep. Also being up two games to one. Don't want to give that extra pin away. But Wisner can go. Actually, Wisner can tie the match. With a strike here, they'll have a double in frames four and five. And we've seen Drennan Hinkst here throw a few clutch strikes already. That's going to be a little left to target. Mm -hmm. Ben is going to stay in the lead. Even with the spare here for them, they're actually with the spare, they'll they will be behind. Wizard will be behind by about three pins. Or excuse me, I'm sorry, Larry, they'll, they'll be the lead. Yep. That's right. Ravenna will be behind by about three <coughs> pins. So Wisner's got a win down two to one. Big spare to take the lead. Notice how Hang he flattens on. the ball out got there. Got it. Yep. Textbook. Been coached very well. So we'll switch at the fifth frame and let you know that if you'd like to preserve these memories for a lifetime, the memories of the State High School Championship, you can get a DVD of the NHSBF Championship by logging on to NHSBF.com. Just follow the links and you can order a copy of this year's Boys or Girls State High School Bowling Championships. The girls, of course, competed last week and the guys finishing it up here today. Good shot by Wisner Pilgers, Philip Wolf. Another strike by Philip. Phillip's been delivering so far, not, uh, not hurting his team, both in the open frames. Better shot there, very good shot. Staying right there, still a nine pin lead by Wisner Pilger, but that strike kept them right in the hunt. Here's Tanner Schmidt. Schmidt, get it. One, two, four remaining. And now, Ravenna can regain the lead with a strike here. Here's Riley Pates. It's going to be hang on. Seeing now people trying to steer the ball. We all have to aim, of course, in bowling, but sometimes if you steer the ball, it just means you're over aiming, and over aiming can cause you to, to miss your mark, especially to the left if you're a right handed bowler. Nice cover there by Tanner. Wisner back in the lead now, Larry. Mm -hmm. Important spare here. Don't want to go down any more than they already are. And nice conversion. Oh, good cover by Riley Pates. Back up on the left lane, Jake Schultz. Keeps Ravenna right there. They still have a chance to win this and win the state championship here in this fourth game. So the big shot here with Wisner. Needs to skid. Oh, Ooh. what a tough break. Wow. Yep. And that ball was in the heavier condition part of the lane, and the center of the lane never got into a roll, even though it did begin to move towards the pocket. Just uh, didn't get into a heavy enough roll to carry the five in the pocket. So Ravenna right here can set itself up mm -hmm. for a state championship if they can strike here. And that's a good shot. Wigan got it. He gets the mix that Jake Schultz wanted. So he carries the shot, and they have now pending this shot. Ooh, good run. So now 143, and they've taken the lead, has Ravenna. Now if they can strike here, that lead will balloon to more than 10. 
But based on count right here, you would have the mark. Yeah, by 16 with a strike here. A little heavy. So now needs a mark, and they'll be up by four. I don't know if this is a must strike situation here, but if it's uh, if yeah. it's not, it's real close for Wisner. Yep. Important shot here for Drennan Hinkst. Oh, and he made a good shot. Set. Ooh. Just about ended up with the 4-7-9 split. This young man doesn't look like much bothers him. Good cover. Pretty solid game from Brian Slocum. Very comfortable on the lane, steps up, stares it down, and goes. Wisner to have a relatively good chance to continue on. on. Needed to pick that yeah, up. Yeah, that was. That's going to be a painful one. Now down by 15, Ravenna can shut out Wisner with two strikes. First one's close, got it, what a shot. 167 now. Actually, that's, not, that's, that's not it even right two there. Strikes. All he needs to do is get count. 77, he's six 83, pins. so, yep, six pins. It, and that's providing he strikes out. And he did, got the first one. Providing Walt strikes out. And he's gonna wait to see what he needs to do. And he'll... Allow Philip Walt to go one more time. A little bit of a chess match here. You know, I think the other puts the pressure on. It, uh, absolutely puts the pressure on Philip Walt. Yep. Got a strike here. Otherwise, Ravenna gets the trophy. It's right of target. It's got to get up. And that'll do it. That's enough. And coach might also want to allow somebody else to bowl here now in the tenth, which is another added benefit. But nope. Kelly will close it out. He's a yep. senior. Now, now he's saying, yep, let's let you sit down and we'll give somebody else an opportunity. I like this move by coach. Give these kids a chance to make the shot and the pressure of the arena, even though there's no pressure in winning the game. Still, being up with the cameras on you in this environment, that's pressure in and of itself. Sure. So the championship will go to Ravenna. And Matthew Nazica will get a chance to throw a shot in the arena. Be nice to get a strike. It's only shot on television for the day. Good run. <laughs> well, as I said earlier at the beginning of this uh, Class C match, Don and Pam Herbert at the Sports Bowl and Ravenna just worked hard to keep area youth in organized bowling, and that has blossomed into a very good high school program now. And of course, with the help of Daniel Schmidt, their coach. State championship for the Blue Jays. What a great job. Way to go, Matthew. He steps in and picks up the spare, and that gives the state championship to the Ravenna Blue Jays. Their third trip to state, first time in the arena finals, and they take home a state championship. 187-171, they win it in four, three games to one. The Ravenna Blue Jays knock off Wisner Pilger. When we come back, Steve Simpeck will chat with the champs and will also hand out the trophies and wrap up our day-long coverage of the Nebraska High School Bowling Federation Boys State Championships. Time Warner Cable is dedicated to the future of our nation's children. That's why we've launched our Connect a Million Minds initiative. We're asking adults to help us inspire kids through science, technology, engineering, and math. And we're achieving this through local partnerships with FIRST. Across the country, Time Warner Cable employees are helping bring FIRST robotics competitions to the areas we serve. The future of our nation and our children depends on math, science, and technology. Visit ConnectAMillionMinds.com to find out what you can do. When will you look deep into space? When will you travel back in time? When will you experience the power of red? When? Anytime. Online at video.netnebraska.org. Search, select, and share with the NET Video Player. Watch our shows on your schedule. Michael Forsberg, inviting you to join me on the banks of the Platte River 
along with a few hundred thousand of my feathered friends, the Sandhill Cranes. This wildlife spectacle doesn't happen quite like this anywhere else on the planet. And luckily, we can experience it here in the heart of the Great Plains. So I hope you'll support NET and join me for the NET Crane Excursion on Friday, April 1st. Antiques Roadshow is discovering the hidden treasures of the Hawkeye State. Holy moly. <laughs> Thank you for saying holy moly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Don't miss our visit to Des Moines, Iowa next time on Antiques Roadshow. Monday night at 7 Central Time on NET1. Welcome back to Sun Valley Lanes as we wrap up a day long of Nebraska High School Bowling Federation Championships and it is concluded in Class C where Ravenna knocks off Wisner Pilger three to one. After losing the first game, they come back and take the next three. Steve Simpek is with our champs. Let's go to Steve. Oh, all right, thanks a lot, Larry. And here we are with Coach Daniel Schmidt, first state championship for the for the Ravenna Blue Jays in the boys Class C division. Uh, and we've got three seniors here. As Larry and I uh, talked in the booth, we decided who we wanted to talk to. We felt since it's a strong senior-laden team, we were going to bring out all the seniors. We've got Brian Slocum here. We also have uh, Kelly McFadden, and we've got Jacob McWigan. And, uh, Coach, uh, so now you've got a trophy to match the girls. And uh, what's it mean to have all the seniors on the team, and what's it mean for the seniors to leave a little bit of a legacy for the underclassmen. I'll tell you what, this is an extremely hardworking group of boys. These three guys have really been good mentors to the group underneath them. Uh, I couldn't ask for three guys that worked harder. You know, they, they come in and they practice when we don't have practice. You know, they, they go to other towns, they bowl, they come up to our home house and bowl. You know, it's, they've worked hard. So, you know, they, they've been a great uh, influence on the guys behind them, and hopefully they can continue to keep pace with them. So. Well, I tell you what, we talked in the booth about uh, about you, Brian, and, and uh, how you were listed on the bio sheet as the power bowler, uh, but you never changed any expression. So, uh, so what, what goes through your mind there when uh, when uh, you're trying to navigate what's got to be a little bit of a tough lane condition there at uh, one point in time? I was just trying to remember to hit the arrow. That's pretty much all I was trying to do. Besides the fact I was trying to make sure that um, we didn't, like, get overexcited because if I get excited I screw up. <laughs> oh, all right well boys congratulations to you three seniors for the Ravenna Blue Jays and once again coach Daniel Schmidt uh, first state championship for the for the boys team for the Ravenna Blue Jays uh, in Class C and uh, congratulations coach. Larry back to you in the booth it's been a great day for Class C. All right, thanks very much, Steve, and congratulations one more time to Ravenna, your Class C Boys State Champions. And now for the trophy presentations and the medals, we go to our public address announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, have a nice round of applause for our two finalists. And now for the rewards presentation, your Class C Boys runner-up, the Wisner Pilger Gators. Led by coaches Krista Geese and Kathy Geese. Number eight, Drennan Hinkst. Number one, Philip Wolt. Number three, Dennis Tomka. Number 11, Jake Schultz. And number two, Tanner Schmidt. And here's your runner-up trophy. Congratulations to the Wisner Pilger Gators, your Class C boys runner-up. And now, here's your 2010-2011 Class C boys champions, the Ravenna Blue Jays.
led by coaches Dan Schmidt and Don Herbert. Number two, Riley Pates. Number 26, Brian Slocum. Number 21, Jacob McQuiggan. Number one, Kelly McFadden. Number 17, Dexter Barrett. And number 11, Matthew Noziska. And here's your championship trophy. Congratulations to the 2010-2011 Class C Boys Champion. <laughs> so that's a wrap for the Boys State High School Bowling Championships. Ravenna wrapping it up in Class C. Four champions crowned this morning. Ravenna in Class C. Columbus winning the Class A Championship. Hastings in Class B. And bright and early this morning, Humphrey St. Francis winning the Class D Boys State Championship in a sweep over Clarkson. A couple of first timers, the yeah. Ravenna Blue Jays we just saw and early this morning, the St. Francis, uh, Humphrey St. Francis Flyers. So it's great to see some fresh blood here in the state championships. Larry, it's been a great uh, pleasure working with you again and yeah. uh, another successful high school bowling season. Well, we look forward to the day that we can do this uh, when all these kids are sanctioned by the NSAA, and hopefully that's just around the corner as we continue to make progress in that regard. So we encourage everyone, of course, to contact your athletic director to support high school bowling in your area because that's what's going to get it done. Absolutely. We look forward to that day. We think it's on the horizon soon, and uh, you know it's a great testament. The, the standing room only crowds all weekend at all four bowling centers just shows the popularity of the sport. So for Steve Simpak, I'm Larry Putney, and for our entire NET Sports production crew, outstanding job all day, folks. Thank you for joining us. The Nebraska High School Bowling Federation state champs are in the books. We'll see you next year. I'm Jeff Beckman. If you enjoy sports action on NET and if you want to see this excitement continue for many generations, consider making a gift to the NET Endowment Fund. NET is Nebraska sports and your gift makes that possible. NET Sports is on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com slash NET Sports to get all the latest NET Sports updates. While you're there, comment on our wall, watch highlights from all our live events, see our upcoming schedule, and check out our in-depth background features. I cried over there last year. Uh, yeah, that was me. Ironically, the tallest member of the Husker squad. It's all on Facebook.com slash NET Sports. Nebraska state senators are considering Arizona-style legislation allowing law enforcement to check the immigration status of people they stop. It's a controversial idea, and NET News is listening to what lawmakers and Nebraskans have to say. Join NET News reporter Fred Knapp for Nebraska's Talking Illegal Immigration and a discussion of the bill's pros and cons. Monday night at 10 Central on NET One and NET HD. It's so critically important to have an entity like public broadcasting. It has to be commercial free, non-commercial. It has to be about what's in the best interest of you as an individual and you as a citizen of this country to get accurate information as best we can, uninfluenced by any advertising or politics, so that you can make more informed decisions. No other service connects Nebraska like NET, and your support makes that possible. Thank you.